Good evening. My name is Lexi Gruber, and it is my pleasure to welcome you to Opportunity Nation's National Opportunity Summit on Youth Employment. As part of this mission, Opportunity Nation has brought 75 of our nation's greatest young leaders and change makers to Washington, and I am so honored to be one of them. These opportunity leaders have distinguished themselves by not only removing barriers for others in their communities, but by personally overcoming challenges that too often define the destinies for young adults. My own journey begins in a community that is plagued by statistics and prescribed failure, preordained lives lesser than we deserve. When I became a foster child at the age of 15, I quickly learned there were few families for someone my age. I was offered the chance to live in short-term foster homes, but I would have to change schools every time I moved. I was not willing to give up a stable education for the remote possibility of finding a family. I learned that a law called the McKinney-Vento Act would allow me to stay in my high school while living outside of the school district, as long as I met the act's definition of homeless. I chose to be homeless. I knew that education was my only lifeline. As you can imagine, this presented very unique barriers to success. But I had a saving grace in my school social worker. Through her support and mentorship, I realized that my will to succeed could not and would not ever be abolished. My life circumstances could have so easily rendered me a statistic. But through her guidance, I prevailed. But not all young adults have access to mentors that can help them navigate the obstacles in their path. And far too often, the lack of a support system allows promising young adults to fall victim to statistics. That's often the case for foster kids, like me, that age out of the system without a family. Within one year of aging out of foster care, 20% of these young adults will experience homelessness. Within two years, 25% will become incarcerated. And within three years, 71% will be, of these women will become pregnant. By the age of 25, less than 2% will have completed a four-year college degree. And while I'll be proud when I walk across the stage at my college graduation in 81 days, I'll be even more proud. <laughs> I'll be even more proud that with access to mentors and opportunities, I have lived to defy the statistics. I know I can't give all young adults the kind of mentorship and opportunity I have been so blessed to receive, but I've used my passion for education and access to opportunity as fuel for my work. Over the past few years, I've had the chance to work in this issue area, including participating in the Congressional Coalition on Adoption Institute's FOSS Youth Internship Program. I could have never dreamed that I would one day work in Washington. But at the age of 20 years old, CCAI afforded me the opportunity to work with Congressman Jim McDermott, co-chair uh, co of the Congressional Foster Care Caucus. Every single person in that office went out of their way to expand upon the opportunity they had given me. They respected my story and my resilience, but they didn't let it define me. For the first time, I wasn't pitied or offered a lower standard of excellence. They valued me for my willingness to go the extra mile, and they respected me for the work that I produced. The faith they placed in me, the confidence they had, encouraged me upon my return to Connecticut to work on two bills aimed at closing the academic achievement gap for youth and state care. I'm proud to say that both bills became law in the spring of 2014. It has been hard work, but my efforts have increased educational opportunity for foster youth in Connecticut. Now, my work back home in Washington showed me that foster youth weren't the only ones in need of greater access to opportunity. 5.6 million young adults remain disconnected from school and work. Youth unemployment is in the double digits. And just far too many of our nation's young adults aren't given a fair shot. All young adults need access to mentors, internships, and most importantly, meaningful education pathways. This isn't something that can be accomplished easily, but over the next 24 hours, we have the opportunity to work together, to brainstorm together, and to collectively recreate blueprints for change using the summit's call to action. The responsibility for all of us in this room to create pathways of possibility for youth is not simply American. It is human. It is inherent. I advocate for this cause not simply because of my experiences. I advocate for this cause because we all should feel compelled to, 
Because as long as we value the potential for America's future, we cannot betray our moral responsibilities or allow the precedent to be set that the solutions to these problems lay beyond our own capabilities. The debates over social and economic issues will persist as long as our democracy does. But there can be no such debate, no such compromise, no cost to benefit ratio in the future of our children, of our young adults, and of this great country. Thank you.